What's up YouTube? This is Kokorin TCG back with another video and today I will be going over my Angel Feathers deck profile. Long story short, I farmed that Rekka skin, I got my 4 Metatron, and I was like, it's time to go back to what I would consider my first guilty pleasure in Vanguard. I don't know what it is about Angel Feathers, maybe it's the defensive play, maybe it's the cool combos, and maybe it's the fact that if you misplay you pretty much lose because this deck doesn't have a lot of room for error. I just really enjoy this clan, it's a really stimulating clan to play and people misplay against this clan all the time. So let's go over the list. I have made a couple of substitutions because I do not have every clan at maxed rarity sadly, but fear not. I'll let you guys know what you should be playing in the slots that I've opted to put my substitutes. And I, as far as background, I, I've been playing this since it came out. I may have not had everything, but I knew quite a few Angel Feather players, and I've watched a lot of tournament footage of Angel Feathers, seen a lot of different deck profiles, so I have kind of done my research on this, but not everything is set in stone. So if you guys have opinions, or you guys have ideas for Angel Feathers, or you just wanna like, tell me hey in the comment section below, please let me know, I love talking to you guys. But for the deck profile, I am playing for my starter, the Sunny Smile Angel. And simply put, she is a fifth heal. She lets you plus one when you boost with her. She is a great card. Uh, best starter. I don't really like the Metatron superior ride effect. It's kind of like the Criff. It's not worth it. You can just play a different starter that gives you more utility and just ride at the normal tempo. You don't really miss much for doing it. It's not like your opponent's going to push you to four damage on turn two. For my triggers, I am playing nine draw and four heal. I'm pretty sure nine draw is most likely the most optimal way to play this deck, but stands is purely a preference. If you like playing stands in your Angel Feathers list, don't worry about it. Play your stands. But for me personally, I want to make sure that I'm drawing into all my pieces so that way I can combo and hit my limit break when I need to. So I'm opting to play 9 draw. And the grade ones, of course I'm playing 4 PG. I have two of my four slots of self-damagers as my grade one self-damager, so there's two here. And onto the grade one no-seal, I only have two of them. If I had more, I'd be playing more. I just saw a list that one using three counts of no-seal in both the grade one and grade two slot. Not playing four and four can win you games. So you do not need to play all four. You do not need to have all four copies of no-seals in both grade one and grade two to be able to play this deck. Five is probably the bare minimum where you can comfortably play other starters. But if you have more no seal, please play more no seal. In the meantime, I am playing this grade one vanilla in the place of that sixth no seal that I would be playing in the grade one slot. And finally, your best grade one ride target is the thousand ray Pegasus. It's great on rear, it's great on Vanguard. It's just a great card. Basically when anything hits your damage zone, you get plus 2k. So when your opponent attacks you and you don't hit trigger, it gains plus 7k. When you hit a trigger, it gains plus 12k. And this is the same thing with the grade 2 million ray pegasus it's just a very defensive and strong card and there's a lot of players that aren't used to playing against angels and will misplay against this card try to push more than one damage or try to push three damage on a turn something crazy and they have not built columns specifically for that extra 2k effect every single time something hits your damage zone so it's a great defensive card for that purpose and it's amazing on rear guard columns making your rear guard columns really beefy that is the grade one lineup for the grade twos i am playing three copies of grade two no seal let's say you only have two copies of the grade one if you can somehow try to fit in that fourth copy of the grade two no seal that is another way to get your six count and will really make sure that you're able to swap things with your damage zone at pretty much the optimal amount of times you might need to do it but for now i'm playing the three this deck is pretty counter blast reliant and so i am still playing the core memory armoros which is counter blast to draw a card it's going to help with your consistency which with combo decks can be a little bit of a struggle in zero especially most of the decks in this game are very high release so cards like this is really good for circumventing those bad hands those morikawa hands and as a side note, another good thing about the no seals is that when you use their effect to place a card from your hand into the damage zone to get something else from the damage zone, the card you put in the damage zone, go damage zone goes face up. So you can kind of refund yourself counter blast to use for your Metatrons and your medical gunners and your armorosis. So that's another sneaky way to get that counter blast. I, of course, I'm playing four copies of the grade two Pegasus because the Pegasi are absolutely amazing. I haven't called these things ponies at all this uh, video, so if you know the reference, you know the reference. And finally, I have two of the grade two self-damager. Um, that's the grade two count. Finally, for the grade threes, I only have one sham shield. It's not 
I, I just never thought I'd really want to play this deck a lot, and now I'm realizing this deck is actually pretty good, and I really like playing this. But Sham Shield is probably your best grade 3. Metatron is good for pushing damage and setting up board and setting up your damage zone, but Sham Shield is what you really need to play because she's going to make sure you have those PGs at the end of the game, you have those pieces in the mid game, and her skill also is going to help you boost those Pegasi on the rear guard columns when once you ride her. Not only that, but she also gains 2k for every time something goes into the damage zone, so her skill inherently gives her buff damage or when your opponent's attacking her she gains really high defensive stats really fast there's like this exponential growth so she's an amazing card to for longevity and keeping you in the game but also making sure that you have the combo pieces in your hand to keep going so if you have more sham shield play more sham shield but i have a couple of substitute ideas in case you don't have all copies of sham shield before I get to that, I'm going to go over my heal, which is the Medical Gunner Hermiaries. The reason why I have this on heal is because you want to see your heals in the damage zone and you can pretty much pull anything you want from the damage zone using your Angel Feather effects. So this being on heal is not a problem. You heal with it first, you combo with it later. And overall, it's just a really good card and it's the only card that facilitates multi-attacking in this deck and you can do some pretty sick combos with this. So that's why I'm playing four of these. As my substitute for Sham Shield, I added an extra three copies of the Phoenix F Calamity Flame, so I'm playing four of these now. And it has the same effect like the Pegasi and the Sham Shield, where when something hits my damage zone, I gain plus 2k. So really good for combos and making it a really big body. It can really help you push for a game. It gets really big really fast. But like I said, if you have more Shams, play more Shams. I'm not playing Kirill because Kirill's a little too counterblast heavy. Uh, in this deck. Metatron kind of does the same thing as her, uh, but a little bit different. Uh, you get an extra card, but you have to put two in the damage zone, so I think Metatron's just a better card for setting up. So that's why I've opted to cut Kirill. But finally, we have Crimson Impact Metatron. And the cool thing about this card is, although it's once per turn, you counter blast one, and you put two rear guards into your damage zone and call two from your damage zone. So this is a great way, one, to get that Hermiaries back on board to do multi-attacking. You can set up intercepts, and this card is really the facilitator to push your opponent to four, five damage, set up really big columns if you're trying to push them the game. Any time in the game, this is a good card, even though Sham Shield is the better grade three in my opinion still. Metatron was a great addition for Angel Feathers in the current meta. This is my Angel Feathers deck list. I really like it. It's not perfect, but I, I think I do have a very strong concept of how to play this deck and how to build it. If you guys have any like thoughts, opinions, just want to say hi, don't forget to put it in the comment section below and let's get to some games. Don't forget to smash that like button, leave a comment. The more comments you guys leave, the better the content is for you guys. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I really love doing this and hopefully you guys love my content too. Okay, and here was my game against a great nature player. I felt very confident going into this game. I managed to uh, get my only copy of Sham Shield in this hand. And when I sent back the Metatron in the other grade three, I managed to get two copies of the grade one Pegasus. So my hand was very strong here. I felt very confident. So I decided to emote here. A lot of players don't have their emotes on. So since this player could actually see my emotes, I felt like I should wave and say hi. <laughs> So my opponent rides into the Stamp Otter here, which basically forces them to put that Black Parrot behind their Vanguard to hit. And they still had another Stamp Otter. I don't know why they committed the other Otter there, um, but I will say from my own personal experience, I, I don't know if I agree with my opponent's decision to play like more than two of the Otter. There's just so many great ones that like, you want to play in Great Nature. And so it's a very competitive spot, your grade one slots, especially since you only have nine slots because of PGs. I go ahead and write the grade two Pegasus here because it's a really good, it's really good for building defensive numbers really fast. And I was actually very tempted to play a grade one and try to push damage here. And so I go ahead and I commit this 
8k vanilla because I realized that I wasn't going to actually use it. So that's why I decided to do that. I already had a self damager and I already had a pegasus in my hand. So my rear guard columns were set to go. And I mostly used my vanguard column to set up an angel feathers rather than to try to clean up shop and get that last damage. And a lot more of the plays in this game will kind of show that off. All right, and so my opponent rides the Binoculus Tiger here. So I'm definitely looking forward to some retire plays. But my opponent just decides not to play anything else. So by this point, I'm really thinking they might have a Morikawa hand. I don't know what's happening here, but I, I expected them to push more. It's definitely beneficial as a great nature player to rush. And uh, most decks do benefit from rushing, so I was really surprised. But my opponent didn't even play another grade 2 or play another grade 1. But keeping the tempo uh, not necessarily in their favor, kind of evening things up here. I'm going into my grade 3 turn, and I really want to ride the Sham Shield. I'm going to let this animation ride out. I know not everyone likes animations. So if you guys want me to get rid of the animations in my deck and fight videos, please let me know in the comment section below. And um, I might remove those, but I think they're kind of nice when they really add to the cinematic feel that I'm trying to go for. The nice thing is that because my opponent doesn't have an 11k base right now, they only have a 9k base, Hermiaries is extremely strong. It's extremely strong this turn. And so I was really hesitant on what to play and what not to play here. I really wanted to take advantage of my opponent's board. And so I commit that self damager behind Vanguard. I commit the grade two self damager on my other rear column and then I decide to play the Hermiaries here and uh, the two self damagers were just there to make my columns a little bit bigger so I can actually confirm hits on my opponent's vanguard so definitely I was really nervous here but really really um, glad with this play I swing with the Hermiaries counter blast one to grab what do I grab so I grab the grade one here which I could have honestly just grabbed the Metatron, but my thinking was that I could pull that from the damage zone. And I, I think this goes as a testament that <laughs> Sham Shield really does pull a lot of the weight for this clan, and it really does facilitate a lot of the madness that you can really do with Angel Feathers. It's really a Sham Shield kind of show. And because my opponent didn't hit a trigger, I'm able to push them to four with my other rear guard column. So I have two columns right now and I'm kind of betting on a trigger right now. Not playing that, not playing the Metatron off of the Hermiaries. This really starts to uh, affect me here. But I go ahead and use Sam Shield regardless and I try to, to make the most of this play here. Being able to push my opponent and I get the draw trigger. So it's just everything, all the pieces are aligning. Double draw trigger for me here. And my opponent hits a draw trigger here. So it felt really bad. This was really Pepega. Uh, for those who know me via Twitch, you guys know that my ability to throw games is unparalleled. <laughs> if I would have played anything except for the, uh, the self damager, I think I actually could have pushed game on this turn. Which is really crazy to think a 4 damage turn. Um, but Hermiary is really putting in a lot of work for Angel Feathers and really allowing so much damage. So much damage. It really allows you to build really big boards. It combos so well with so many pieces in the deck. So Hermiary is probably my hands down my favorite card in the deck just because multi attacking is really fun. But my opponent goes, goes ahead, they ride the Polaris here. And uh, I don't usually see Monoculus Tiger, so I was a little confused on what it did, to be honest. And so my opponent is going to try to make the most of this Leopold on rear. But 5-2 to two is not a really good situation for my opponent to be in. I can say that much. I'm going to go ahead and swing into my self-damager, my only grade 2 on board. 
The Leopold is going to go ahead and swing in. It's going to buff the Otter. Nice thing is with the Otter is that it never gets retired. So it's just free to soak up all the abilities, all the retire abilities. So it's just a nice grade one to play every once in a while. I damage the Hermiaries. So it's really good for me. It gives me a high defensive number. And it also helps me set up my plays for next turn. Then you're going to go ahead and restand with Polaris here and make an absolutely massive Leopold. It's the heal trigger. And at this point, I'm kind of starting to sweat here. They just keep hitting triggers. Definitely a really strong turn for my opponent. And they're going to go ahead and push me to four. And they, uh really swing the game in their favor with this Leopold skill. It's going to be able to push me to 5. So really strong aggressive plays from both me and my opponent this game. Definitely had us both on the edge of our seat. Uh, that is for sure. And uh, right now ending the turn with a 41k Sham Shield. An absolutely massive defensive stat. You don't see that every day. <laughs> All right. I'm pretty much here. I'm thinking I have to I have to make the most of this turn. I don't want this game to go on any longer than it needs to. Definitely having Polaris at limit break, you kind of want to end them as fast as possible. The longer they have to make plays, it the harder it becomes for you as the, the player against them. So I really wanted to try to end things as fast as possible here. And I'm just checking my triggers to see how likely it is for me to hit a trigger. Because I, what I want to do here is I want to set up a Hermiaries, which can be really helpful to make sure that I actually get a second chance to push against PGs, especially if I can hit a trigger here off of the Sham Shield. And so I use the Grade 2 No Seal to grab that Hermiaries out of the damage zone. And the only thing I can think to myself is I have to make absolutely massive columns. If my columns aren't massive, there is no way I'm going to be able to push past this Polaris. Great Nature is well known for being able to filter very well, so it's really likely that my opponent will see a trigger here. And so I go ahead and grab this second PG here, just for defensive purposes. If I miss game, I don't want to lose here. And so I take advantage of everything, grab that second PG. I sadly retire my grade one self damager on that rear guard column, but I get a Hermiaries in replacement. And I just go ahead and swing with the sham here. The hope is that I can use her effect to boost that Pegasus on rear column behind my Hermiaries. And then hopefully I hit a draw trigger here so that way I can set up for a three attack turn on Vanguard. So another four attack play. I hit the draw trigger here, which is really good. It's very good that I hit the draw trigger here. So now that Hermiaries is wide open to hit that Polaris. Hermiary swings into the Polaris. And we're gonna play a little game. Does my opponent have PGs? But before that, I'm gonna go ahead and take out another grade two, making not only the column bigger, but giving me more defensive options going into next turn. Since my opponent did not hit a trigger, I get to hit, but I head into the PG. And now here's for the final moment, can my Pegasi column take game? And there you have it guys, that is how you win with Angel Feathers. Perfect. Perfect.